Well, approximately 1.6 million people will be diagnosed with cancer just this year. But thanks to continuous medical breakthroughs, the chance of survival is on the rise. By 2024, the number of male survivors will go from 6.9 million to 9.3 million. And female survivors will go from 7.6 million to 9.6 million. So just how close are we to a cure? Joining me now are five leaders, extraordinary leaders in that fight, from the Sarah Cannon Research Institute CEO, Deanna Smith, and Dr. Skip Burris, Erica Hamilton, Johanna Bendel, and David Spiegel. We thank you all for being with us. Uh, Deanna, I want to start with you. This center is, is huge. Its mission is massive. What are we, explain the landscape right now in terms of how the Institute is working hard to get closer to a cure. Right, so we know the statistics are compelling. As you said, one out of two men, one out of three women will be diagnosed with cancer. Uh, we're a global network and we're committed to bringing access, um, world-class cancer care to patients in the communities where they live. Oh, it's incredible to hear that. Dr. Skip Burris, we're thankful that you're here right now. There are some new, new treatments and research that are going on right now. What can you tell us today? So it's an amazing story, Elizabeth. Yeah. So over 40 years since President Nixon mm -hmm. declared the war on cancer, and after decades of giving more drugs and more radiation, we now are fighting the battle totally in a different manner. And the results are, are frankly dramatic. We're now using targeted therapies to aim only at the cancer cells and spare the normal cells, tar true targeted approaches. We're using pills to turn off problems in cancer cells so that they'll die and go away. And then most importantly, we're learning how to use the body's own immune system to in fact fight our cancers. And the results with that have been nothing short of dramatic. When, when we hear about Angelina Jolie's treatment, what can you tell us about that? So Angelina Jolie had inherited a gene, the BRCA gene, uh, sometimes known as the breast cancer gene, mm -hmm. that causes uh, patients that have that gene to have a very high incidence of cancer, often over 50%. So she did the right thing. She prophylactically removed those tissues that were at the highest risk for developing cancer. Okay. Well, that brings us to Dr. Hamilton right here in the back. Thanks for being here. What Pleasure. breakthroughs in breast cancer should we have our eyes on that you're working on today? Yeah, so I think one of the most exciting breakthrough in women's cancers really is an ovarian cancer, like you all were speaking about earlier. Um, uh, ovarian cancer that's a associated with uh, the BRCA gene or a hereditary form of ovarian cancer. And recently we've had the approval of a medicine called Olaparib, uh, which targets the BRCA gene. Uh, and I think this is really compelling because it shows us when we understand what's driving these cancers, uh, we really can uh, effectively fight them better, not use chemotherapy necessarily, necessarily uh, spare the patient some of these side effects. We realize that uh, treatment of cancer is not a one-size-fits-all approach anymore. We have to tailor our treatment to individual cancers and the individual patient. Well, it's great that work is going on. Dr. Bendel, I want to transfer here to now colon cancer. What can you tell us in the very latest area of that? Well, we're so excited. In the last 10 years, we've probably tripled survival for patients with colon cancer, and that's been a lot due to new treatments that have come down the block. In fact, this year, we've just had a new treatment that was approved last week, uh, which blocks blood vessel flow to the cancers, and I think we're going to have another one approved later this year. And most of these are, again, targeted agents, looking at having the body fight the cancer itself mm -hmm. and then what's even more important is bringing these agents like Deanna was mentioning earlier into the community so most patients can stay in their homes and have access to the latest and greatest care. Oh, thank you for that great work. Lung cancer one of the top killers out there Dr. Spiegel mm -hmm. what's going on there in research? Yeah that, that's correct the leading cause of uh, death from cancer I'm, I'm a little selfish but I think m more excitement is happening in lung cancer research than, than anything else in oncology. Uh, one of the more exciting things has been, as Dr. Burris alluded to, the idea that you can use a therapy to boost a person's own immune system to fight cancer. Just in the last two months, we have a drug that's now approved. It's a medicine that boosts a patient's immune system, effectively turning that on to fight cancer cells. And just two weeks ago, another therapy... Uh, Are you referring th to the polio? No, a little bit different. The, okay. the idea is uh, somewhat similar in terms of trying to activate your immune system, but these are therapies that uh, don't work through that polio vaccine that uh, you're alluding to. So in the last two months, we have new therapies that are on the horizon for a lot of patients with lung cancer that are diagnosed every year that can use their own body's immune system to fight cancer. Very exciting. Incredible work. I want everyone to take a good look at your faces here because these faces and their minds are working diligently to save lives each and every day. Your teams are fantastic. We thank you for joining us from the Sarah Cannon Research Institute. Thank Great you. Work. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Press on.